What's up guys, I'm BTC. There's a lot of myths and misunderstandings surrounding lock-on and soft lock type abilities in Overwatch. So today I'm going to test everything and I'm going to show you exactly how stuff works and why it does what it does. The Symmetra rework is coming up in about a month or so. And while it's not 100% confirmed at this point, Blizzard has said that they're strongly considering removing the lock-on aspect of Symmetra's primary attack, and instead making it more like a beam, kind of like what Zarya has. But even if that is the case, there's still other issues with characters like Moira and Winston, who have something that players often refer to as a soft lock ability. So I did a ton of testing, and I also created some overlays to better explain how and why everything happens the way it does. And I think a lot of you guys are going to be quite surprised at the results. But first, if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe, because I always have the latest and greatest in Overwatch. So subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss any of it. First things first, we need to define what lock-on is. So a lock-on ability or an attack is going to be something that has one set of rules in order to make a connection to a target and a different, more lenient set of rules to break that connection. Simply put, it's harder to connect it than it is to break it. Now, some of this you might already know, but it's necessary to show it and to explain it so that you can better understand what exactly is going on with Winston and Moira. In order to make the connection, you need three things. One, the ability or the attack hitbox on the target of the player hitbox. Two, be within range. And three, have line of sight. Unlike damaging attacks, Mercy's heal beam has a sensitivity slider. For reference, this is set to 100. So this is the hitbox of the heal beam when it's at that setting. And as you can see, it slowly moves over to the side. And as soon as the healing beam hitbox overlaps with the soldier, it will make the connection. And we know this is a lock-on because the rules for breaking the connection are now different. So as you can see, I no longer need to have the crosshair or the hitbox on the target. So we can just cross that one out. The other two rules can be temporarily broken. You can move out of range or lose line of sight and you'll maintain the connection for a few moments. As long as you get back into range or maintain line of sight again, you'll keep the beam connected and it won't ever get broken. This is what makes an ability or an attack a lock-on. The fact that the requirements for breaking it are a lot more lenient than establishing it. Now let's look at Symmetra. The hitbox on this is fairly large. You can't change it like you can the Mercy Heal Beam, obviously, because it's an attack. But we still need to check for those three things. The hitbox, the range, and the line of sight. So as you can see, when Symmetra begins to move over to the left towards Roadhog, as soon as the hitbox overlaps with Roadhog, it begins the connection. And of course, what makes it a lock-on is again, the rules for breaking it are different. Now, you can't do exactly what Mercy did. You can't just look in completely different directions. So it's more of like bending that rule instead of just completely breaking it. But as you can see, there is quite a bit of leniency in where you can actually move your crosshair and that attacking hitbox. Now we're going to move into the supposed soft locking attacks. And I want to really emphasize something here. What the game is doing mechanically, how an ability or an attack functions, is not always the same as the visual representation you see. Oftentimes, what you're seeing in game is just feedback to the player to let you know what's happening, but the actual function is different. This is the rough size of the Moira hitbox, and as it moves on top of the Roadhog, you'll see something visually very similar to what we had with Symmetra. It appears that the beam is locking on to the center of the target. We're going to come back to that in just a second but it appears to be visually very much the same. But the difference is the instant you move the Moira hitbox off of the Roadhog, it stops doing damage. There is absolutely no lingering effect whatsoever. It appears that it's locking on, but it's actually not. So it doesn't matter if it's because you move the crosshair hitbox, or if because of its line of sight break, or you move out of range. Any of those three things will instantly terminate the beam that is going to the Roadhog. 
what you're getting is a false visual representation that the attack is somehow curving and locking onto the enemy Roadhog. Let's take a look at Zarya. The hitbox on her attack is a lot smaller, but with one minor exception, we'll get to that in just a second here, the attack functions exactly the same as Moira. When you move the hitbox over on top of the Roadhog, it begins dealing damage. And the instant you move it away, it stops dealing damage. But there's a pretty big visual difference, and this is where the confusion comes from. The Moira Beam looks like it's curving and locking on, and the Zarya Beam looks like it's simply going straight out ahead. You have the hit markers for both, but the function is the same. The hitbox, the hit registration of the attack is on top of the enemy player. And the instant you move it away, it stops dealing damage. Whether it's from range, line of sight, or whatever, it will stop dealing damage. There is no actual locking on functionally at all. It is purely a visual representation of the damage you're doing. A key difference then is the size of the attacking hitbox. Now that might be a pretty big surprise to some of you guys, but just wait, there's more. Well, what about Winston? Functionally, it's quite similar to Moira, except the hitbox is much larger and it can also hit multiple targets. The confusion, once again, comes from the visual representation of the damage you're doing. So, when the hitbox is in front of Winston, if the Roadhog is slightly off to the side, you're not going to deal any damage. But the moment I move that hitbox a little to the left, and now Roadhog is inside of it, it's going to start dealing damage, and it's going to look like the little lightning bolts are arcing over to him. But what is really happening is inside that box, Winston is dealing 60 damage per second. And he's dealing that damage to everything that is inside that box. It doesn't matter if it's one or two players or a hundred. Everything inside that box is taking 60 damage per second, no matter what. It's not actually tracking to anything. It's not actually locking on to anything. The whole box is taking that damage. And just like with Moira and Zarya, the instant you move that hitbox away from the Roadhog, or you move it out of range, or you break line of sight, it will stop doing damage. To further prove there's no such soft locking function, I ran a really interesting little test. So I'm going to have Symmetra attack the Roadhog, and once the beam is locked on, I'm going to have Soldier 76 run in between it, back and forth, back and forth. Because this is actually a lock-on effect, the beam will never get broken, and Soldier will never take any damage. It's constantly going to be locked on to the Roadhog. Now we're going to do the same thing, but with Zarya. And as you would expect, the Soldier 76, this time, he starts taking damage. Now I have the settings changed so that he's not going to take a lot of damage, but the fact that you can see his health bar above his head, and also you can see some of the little hit markers and stuff, indicates that the soldier is in fact taking damage as he runs through. So clearly Zarya doesn't have any kind of lock-on ability whatsoever because the soldier is interrupting the beam between him and the Roadhog. Now let's look at Moira. I'm sure you guys can probably guess what's gonna happen. If there was any kind of actual lock-on, any lingering effect whatsoever, if the soft lock was actually a thing, then it would stay connected to Roadhog. But as you can clearly see, it doesn't. What happens with Moira is the exact same thing that happens with Zarya. Now there's one other thing that I need to show you guys, and that is the padding around the enemy hitbox. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, this was something that I experimented on a little while ago, and as you can see, the McCree crosshair is well above the Zenyatta's head. And yet, when I attack, it still registers as a hit. And that's because there's kind of this buffer, a padding, if you will, around all of the enemies. This is there so the vast majority of the characters in the game can more easily hit the enemy targets. So, you might have been wondering, well, why is Moira and Winston's hitboxes for their attack so gigantic it's because they don't get the benefit of that padding. Let me show you. Here's an enemy Zenyatta. This is what you're going to see when you're in game. Let's say you're playing McCree. This isn't his hitbox though. This is his actual hitbox. 
So if you're using McCree, you can aim right here and it will still register as a hit because you're hitting that extra buffer area, the padding. But now let's say you're playing as Moira. This is what you see in game, but this is the actual hitbox. That buffer area is gone. And all of the little extra things that tend to hang off of the other characters, whether they're pieces of armor or decoration, all of that stuff is no longer hittable by Moira because the hitbox has been kind of shrunk. In fact, it's probably a little bit smaller than the actual size of the character. And as a result, they made the hit registration boxes for Moira's attack or for Winston's attack a lot bigger. Why they decided to do this and have the two different methods, I have absolutely no idea. In order for Moira to land an attack, you can't just have it in this out area here because the buffer just isn't there. You have to move it closer so that it will overlap with the character. Again, as soon as you move it away, it stops doing damage. There is functionally no such thing as a soft lock-on in this game. It's just a myth and it was just busted. Now you might be asking, well why does Blizzard do this then? Why do they make it so that it appears that the Moira or the Winston attack is actually curving and locking onto the enemy? And the answer is, because Blizzard just likes the way it looks. There's plenty of other abilities in the game that do the exact same thing. For example, Roadhog's hook will always go to the center even if you throw it at the enemy's foot. Sombra's hack does the same thing. Ana's nano boost, Orisa's supercharger, Brigida's repair pack, Kazaria's bubble, it doesn't matter. The hitbox for the ability is overlapping on the target and therefore it goes straight to the center. It is not actually locking onto them. You already aimed it by putting the hitbox of the attack or the ability on the enemy. It overlapped with their hitbox, and the fact that it looks like it's going to the center and locking onto them is just purely visual feedback. Because it would look really weird if you threw the hook, it went past the enemy, but still pulled them towards you. Or if you nano boosted a teammate and the dart went into the wall, but somehow Reinhardt still gets nano boosted. It wouldn't make any sense. That's why they do what they do. Hopefully you now have a better understanding of the hitboxes, the lock-ons, and why the soft lock-on just doesn't really exist. Thanks for watching. Make sure to check out my Discord server. Follow me on Twitch and Twitter. The links for that stuff are down below. And remember, always, always blame the controller because it's never your fault. Also, special thanks to all my Patreon supporters for helping to make this all possible. If you'd like to see what kind of cool rewards you can get for supporting the channel, check the links on screen and down below.